G'day my friends, Marty Weir from martysgarden.com.au and I've got a cool video for you today. It's very different to what I normally do because I went out and about on an adventure with my daughter Karen, yes, and we drove out into the hinterland to visit a commercial worm farm on the mid-north coast in Australia. And while I was there, I asked some tips and tricks that could be shared by this commercial worm farmer on how you guys can implement stuff at home to get more productive worm farms. Now there's three parts to it. The first part is about the compost wood chip that he uses. The second part is about water in the worm farm. And the third part is about levels. So people are using different levels. And if you're not, about how the water flows through, uh, feeding, the worm farming techniques that you can use to implement back at your place. So watch all the video, plenty in there for everyone. And then hang on to the end because I've got a little bit more to discuss about what's coming up on the Marty's Garden Show. Alright guys, we're going down the big hill. Make sure you got the brakes on Dad. I have. We're in Killabuck, out to see the worm farmer, vermicomposter. And we didn't realise we were going to be on a dirt road all this way. But, we're putting the little red rocket into four wheel drive and down we go, eh? Yep. And low gear. Sure he's out in the forest out here. Today on the Marty's Garden Show, we're out in the Manning Valley of New South Wales and we're visiting Permy Pete and his family because Pete has invited us out to actually teach us and show us his tips and tricks for how he does backyard worm farming. Pete, why use wood chip compost as worm bedding? Okay, we're going to have a look at my compost. This is a finished compost, and this is a compost that I love to use for my worms, particularly when I'm ready for the worms to lay some eggs. So, what's so good about this compost? Well, the first thing is, is it's a hard carbon wood chip compost, meaning that there's just a lot of wood chip which I collect from the local area. Now, there's a few different places that you can get your hands on this. Some places you can get it for free, some places you can buy it by the truckload. Either way, it contains a lot of native material, such as lily pillies and acacia. So the worms love this stuff because it adds bulk. It adds air through your garden. So the worms can get in there and they can lay eggs and it allows all sorts of different habitat for other organisms and microbiology that thrive in your garden. The worms like this because it offers a very natural environment and it allows the native worms to come up through it. It contains lots of leaf, it contains lots of bark and these are all the good things on a forest floor that the worms love to eat and we're basically just trying to replicate that. So this material takes about uh, four weeks to get to this stage and then the worms will eat it for another two weeks. So between around about uh, six to eight weeks you can get a finished compost into your garden ready to go and the worms will be able to take your garden to the next level. Pete, why do we use water in our worm farms? Why do we want to put water in our worm farms? There's a couple of reasons. The first one is to make sure that we deter the other creatures that we don't want living in there such as cockroaches and ants. Now they don't like moist conditions but the worms do so there's the added extra benefit of taking the liquid and being able to use it through our garden so I simply just recycle the water coming out of the bottom only to two or three times and that's just to increase the strength of the worm weed that we're making so you just basically pour it into the top make sure that the whole surface is covered and then that keeps the material nice and wet and nothing else wants to live in it so can we have a look inside the worm farm and just to get a bit more of an example of what we should be doing and Certainly. what sort of, just watch the light there, just went in it, but that's cool. I'd love to show you inside. So this is the, 
the the material. Now there's a few little tricks that this you can. This is the learn. material that we just looked at, is it? It is. So this is the the finished compost from the compost piles, and this was really just to trigger the response in uh, the reproduction of the worms. So we want the worms to lay lots of eggs. I use this bit of old damp, smelly cloth to keep the moisture in and allow the evaporation cycle to happen, cooling the worms. If I squeeze the material, you want to be able to see droplets of water around your hand. Now there's a fair bit of wood chip in this, so I can't actually get a good squeeze on it. But we'll be able to find some more material soon and you'll be able to see how much, material, uh, how much moisture we're actually looking for. So when we add water to the bin to collect the leachates and obviously to keep the worms more moist, um, how often should we do it? You're looking at uh, a minimum of once a week. Now during summer you'd probably be looking at a couple of uh, times during that week. Now we're looking at probably anywhere from a litre to five litres, depending on if you're actually using the liquid through your garden or if you're just trying to keep the worm farm wet. Hey! Let's talk food levels and more tips. So what have we got here, Peter? So this is just um, my worm cafe. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Well, I, I tend to show people a few different ways on, on how to use these. So this is the traditional tiered worm farm. So that people can actually see that... We've got night crawlers and red wigglers in here, don't we? Yes, that's right. So I run a mix of all four worms. I do the African night crawlers, uh, the Indian blues, uh, the reds and the tigers. And I find that it covers for the different times of year. So for summer, you've got your blue worms that really dominate. And then when it's too cool for them in the winter, you've got your reds and your tigers which come through. So awesome. it's a perfect mix all year round. And we're going to the bottom layers here, aren't we? Yep, so as the worms move down, you'll find that the food's eaten and eaten more and more. Uh, but what I've been teaching people is you do have the ability to feed the worms on every single level. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I was always feeding just top level. No, well that's I noticed what... they did eat at the bottom level, so, but... Yep, so as you can see as that's we... That's pretty cool. Yep. Um, and then here's a night crawler here. So you can see that the night crawlers are a lot bigger worm. If you come out of there, buddy. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> come on, mate. So that's they're not going to the... feed you to the yabbies. Yep, so you can still see that they're active and yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. cold here. Yeah. That's a tropical worm. Yeah, right. And then so this is the real secret that I really try and help people out with okay. is that this is the bottom reservoir. Now this, oh, this is, is where I normally have the tank flowing out. Th this is where you normally catch your liquids. You're going to show me up here mate. I've made a big mistake there. <laughs> no. This I'm, is I'm just here a, to learn. I'm here to learn. Right, show this me. Show me. Just another way of doing it. And okay. for me it's about having a safety zone particularly right. in um, in summer when the conditions can get too hot when you're feeding the worms the worms are going to go somewhere and they tend to go down unfortunately for a lot of people they've got their tap shut and when the worms go down they struggle and they end up dying in the liquid now there oh, are a that few, happen that's right yeah now there's a few things in here like these stages or the lugs the platforms that the worms can climb out but i do find that when it's full of liquid it tends to end up sending the farm a little bit smelly. So okay. there is a very important thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this method, and that is you've got to keep the tank or the tap open. So having it raised and having a bucket to capture the leachate is still exactly the same as capturing the leachate in the bottom. Right. What and I've been teaching and what I do is I have my tap open the whole time, and about uh -huh. two or three times a week I throw a whole big bucket full, yep. just catch it, let it drip through, I throw about two thirds of them out on the garden and I pour the other bit through to keep the microbes and everything happy with the leachate coming through. Is that right? And that works, Marty. That works really well. So the big difference that I would then offer, or the suggestion I would offer, is to fill the bottom just with a couple of inches of pea straw or loosen mulch or something that is going to allow the worms to be able to go up and down. So as all that liquid comes down, it permeates through and then what happens is you end up with a finer worm castings. So you end up with all the silt which comes from the top above. Yeah, that's now, a great tip. You can see that the worms are still thriving in here because they've got the right cover. The moisture is still freely draining and I don't normally feed this section but because it's winter and it's cold I can feed quite 
happily without knowing that the worms are going to get too hot. That's so, awesome. Yeah, and it's really a completely different castings because it's more of the sediment that comes down into this bottom reservoir. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Peter, thanks a lot for coming on the uh, the Marty's Garden Show. No worries, mate. Um, we're actually going to be doing more videos with Peter coming up in the future, so keep an eye on the show. And look, lots of really cool worms. Yep, let's have a, a dig in here and see what's actually hidden in the bottom. If people want to get hold of Peter, they can actually go to your website. You've got a website where you're selling uh, worms, don't you, Peter? That's right, it's yeah. wormbiz.com.au. Wormbiz, look at that, look, see, there it is, wormbiz.com.au. <laughs> and, yeah, just head over there, guys. He's got great stuff. We've been here all day. We've been talking so much, we didn't do as much filming as we would have liked to, but There's it's been a good time day. For that, Marty. And we're going to do more. Excellent. Thanks a lot, mate. So that was super fun going out there on the farm with Peter. My daughter had an absolute blast, and we're going to head back. We really enjoyed our time there. Thanks, Pete, for having us out there, mate. Looking forward to seeing you again and sharing more cool tips and tricks from you, man. And also, we've got more stuff coming up about growing food in urban places in the backyard, micro farming, because I'm looking at getting back into urban farming again. But what I've done, I've figured out a way that you can do it in your backyard, you can do any scale from just from feeding your family to having a little tiny hobby farm to actually scaling up and maybe even going full time. So follow along the journey, guys, because I'm heading out there. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep bringing out videos for you. And I'm hoping that you're going to subscribe and hang along and keep watching the show. Have a great day. Happy gardening. And I'll see you at the next video real soon, by the way. There will be some microgreens involved too, guys. Bye for now.